Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Congratulations to premium subscribers here on YouTube. Wisconsin delivered. You should be doing quite well. Um, Kentucky, the run is over. Let's talk boxing. Uh, with regard to the Campillo fight, the uh, hedge for the premium viewers of Perturbi off by KO delivered, but let's talk about that fight. I was a little bit surprised by how bad Campillo looked. I actually thought that him at 10 to 1 was a good part of the play to have, right? I'm glad the hedge held, but I was a little bit surprised at his performance. Now, first, let me say this. And this is the first time I've seen this. Premier Boxing Channel put together Paulie Malinaji with Virgil Hunter. They were inspired all night. Uh, it was a learning experience for me, especially from Virgil Hunter, who really was a breath of fresh air. Now, let me say this about Arthur Perturbioff. I know he won. I know knockouts cause amnesia. He strikes me as extremely limited. Keep in mind, the fight before this one, he was on the canvas, right? This is a guy who, to me, can't really fight backing up. Right? He's a power puncher. He likes to come forward. You understand it's either going to be a left hook up top, he does throw body shots, or it's going to be a right hand, and I'll give him credit on his right hand. He can alter trajectory to split the uprights. In other words, a guy in front of him has his hands like this, he can squeeze it in, kind of like Deontay Wilder against Malik Scott. I'll give him credit on that. But you heard Virgil Hunter on the telecast tell you that he was making an amateur mistake because you could actually tell off of his legs when he was gonna throw that right hand right now keep in mind it's really damning because Baturbioff is not 19 or 20 this is after an amateur career right Baturbioff is now I believe in his early 30s this is a guy who's been fighting long enough where this tell is not going to go away overnight. He's had it for years, right? He was flaring his foot out before he would throw his right hand. You also understand the level of detail, quite frankly, that Virgil Hunter's clients, people like Andre Ward, right, are adhering to because Hunter told you, and you actually saw it after he told you, that Baturbioff had a tell. The problem was Gabriel Campillo, right? Campillo doesn't have an active defense. He's not turned to the side, bouncing his shoulder against you and stuff like that. When he's defending himself, he's not throwing punches. He has what Teddy Atlas calls rabbit ears. He's too square. He's facing you right the problem too is his height he's tall he's taller than Baturbioff so Baturbioff was able to go to the body to such an extent that Virgil Hunter pointed out that Campillo couldn't have been following a game plan to take the fight into the later rounds because he couldn't survive with the number of debilitating body shots he was taking, right? In other words, Campillo should have been moving away, should have been either up on his toes, moving away, protecting his body, or should have had an active defense where he's crouched, where he hides his body. He didn't do either. He was standing parallel to Baturbioff with his hands up, and Baturbioff was able to get off hellacious body shots, right? Campillo, in a post-fight interview, and those are often the best way to know what a fighter was thinking during the fight, said that he never recovered from the first knockdown, right? The first knockdown shook his equilibrium. 
Maybe that's why he wasn't using his legs and moving away. Maybe he was too dizzy. In any event, he got overwhelmed. Let's go through Campillo's history. He has a history of being overwhelmed early, doesn't he? Right? Isn't this the guy who got overwhelmed early by Sergei Kovalov? Right? It takes Campillo a few rounds to figure out the angles. I'll say this. I thought he had some success right out the gate. I thought he had Baturbioff looking amateurish out the gate. But once he got hit, the world changed. So even with Baturbioff clearly letting you know he's throwing right hands, Campillo wasn't able to do much about it. I thought it was really a fascinating fight. Let's just say that I'm still fading Baturbioff. Don't get me wrong, the hedge held here. But I'm still fading him because he still has not made it further than the fourth round, right? The guys he has fought, another guy, Tavares Cloud. You remember Campillo had problems in the early rounds against Tavares Cloud. The guys Baturbioff have fought fit his style perfectly. Right? I believe Baturbiov loses badly today to Bernard Hopkins. Right? I think a guy who, you know, will know what to do with a guy who doesn't have a back foot game. Keep in mind, too, I know Hopkins lost to Kovalev. Kovalev went eight rounds before he fought Hopkins. Right? Here, Baturbiov hasn't gone past the fourth round. Right? Even by... Kovalev standards. This is a shocking amount of inexperience, right? I believe Baturbiov has been fighting guys tailor-made for him. I'd be curious to see what happens when he fights a guy who has a defensive plan other than standing there in front of him like this, right, with his body open, which is what Campillo did, right? I also think, too, now opponents understand that Baturbiov can change a trajectory on his right hand, right? I think, too, now that Virgil Hunter has let the cat out the bag, people understand that Baturbiov does certain things with his feet, right, that tip off that right hand. Let's talk about the Adonis stevenson Saki Obika fight. Now, I was surprised. The first knockdown, by the way, is not a real knockdown, right? Bika does get dropped. Bika does get dropped legitimately the second time. Fortunately for him, it was near the end of the round. I thought that Stevenson had a chance at a KO. I did expect Bika to do better. I was surprised that Bika was able to linger for 12 rounds. Uh, in fact, I'm surprised both guys were able to linger for 12 rounds. Let me say this. I also consider... Adana Stevenson to be a limited fighter, right? Yes, he can throw that left hand as a lead. Yes, he can throw that left hand as a counter. I didn't see enough right hand, right? Seems to me that he works way too hard for what he's doing. He's jumping around the ring. He reminds me a lot of Manny Pacquiao. Let me say this, though. There is an A-plus performance in this fight. And it takes place in the sixth round, and it's delivered by Pauli Malinashi. Malinashi's on the top of his game. Uh, he's so tired of seeing Saki Obika just plod his way in with no foot feints whatsoever. Right? Against a guy who really is a knockout puncher. That Pauli, during the sixth round, gives us a dissertation on what Bika is doing wrong, right? Uh, Bika's primary problem is he's too obvious in coming forward, right? In the wire parlance, Bika is a mid-range hooker, right? He's there just trying to throw mid-range shots. He's trying to get into mid-range. He's not a skilled boxer who is going to have you guessing on his entry point who's going to pretend he's coming forward but not come forward to open up counter opportunities, right? He's not that guy. 
he's not a long jabber who's going to be out of range moving around right I would consider Adonis Stevenson to be a long jabber right Adonis doesn't really stay in the pocket he's outside he's touching you with a right hand trying to set up a left right Bika's not that guy Bika is always right around the pocket which is a recipe for disaster against a puncher like Adonis Stevenson right understand too Beak is not defensively gifted so you look at the CompuBox numbers from his fight against Andre Ward and you realize by the way Andre Ward a Virgil Hunter client right and you realize that an opponent can land more than 50 percent of power punches on Bika he's that predictable so I encourage everyone to take a look at the sixth round of this fight. Not so much the fight. Just listen to what Pauli Malignaggi has to say. In my opinion, he is dead on. Right? A big part of a fight is the spacing. Right? When a fighter doesn't have the common sense to keep a guy guessing on when he's going to enter Right When he's right in front of an opponent, that makes life for that opponent a whole lot easier. Right, Saki Obika has terrible footwork. And by that, you know, we mean he's plodding along. He's walking up to Stevenson. You know where he's going to be. There's no guesswork. You know when he's ready to throw punches. It's so bad. That Stevenson at times just walks around the ring, something you're not supposed to do, right? Because it crosses your legs, right? Stevenson just backs up and walks around the ring knowing that Saki Obika doesn't have what I call ring coverage. Knowing that he's too far away for Bika, from Bika for Bika to lean across and hit him, right? So Bika, I'll say this. Um... Bika is unique, right? Bika's a tough guy. He's never been stopped in a fight. He only got knocked down once in this fight, even though officially they counted it as two knockdowns, right? Uh, one time he trips over uh, Adonis Stevenson's feet. Understand, he's a righty. Stevenson's a lefty. The feet are going to get tangled, right? Bika gains weight, first fight at 175, he's able to go the distance against Adonis Stevenson, only the second man to do so in Stevenson's last six fights. Let's just say he went a hell of a lot longer than Chad Dawson did against Adonis Stevenson. But while Bika's a tough guy, Bika hasn't mastered the fine art of boxing. So when you look at Bika's biggest fights, you're going to notice that he came up short against Calzaghi, he came up short against... Uh, Lucian Butte, he um, came up short here against Adonis Stevenson. He came up short against Andre Ward. I believe Bika is contender level, right? He's not championship level, certainly not at 175 pounds. He does just enough to test you, not enough to really challenge you, right? Let's talk about Adonis Stevenson's uh, fight style. Stevenson surprised me. He did throw more body shots than I expected. I'll give him credit on that. But let me say, if you can neutralize Stevenson's left hand, and it's a predictable left hand. That's what he sets up. His whole fight style is to jab, 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 throw a left hand, right? He's savvy enough to try to counter you with the left hand as well. If you know he's throwing only left hands, I believe you can beat him. Right? Let's just say I'll be rolling with Kovalev against Adonis Stevenson. Let's just say I take Bernard Hopkins over Adonis Stevenson. Right? I would take Jean Pascal over Adonis Stevenson. In fact, the Pascal fight. Let me back up from that. I believe that fight necessarily has to end by stoppage. We'll talk about that fight if that fight ever gets announced. Okay, let's just say, though, that Adonis Stevenson is 37 years old, 
works awfully hard to win rounds, right? Because he's trying to stay outside of the pocket. Only has a right, uh, only has a left hand, doesn't have a right hand. The right hand is really a placeholder. His jab is not that impressive. Let's just say I'm an Adonis Stevenson skeptic. Understand, too, he's 37 years old. He looked very tired against Von Farah. I don't believe Bika forced the pace as much as I'd like him to have done, right? I believe a fighter like a Kovalev can literally force the pace and get Stevenson to tire himself out by the seventh round. We'll see if that happens. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say, as you watch both fights, right, the Paterbia fight and the Stevenson fight, listen to Malinaji and listen to Virgil Hunter. Their performances exceed the performances of the guys in the ring. Thanks for stopping by.